Hey everybody and welcome back to the Frame Fatales Game of the Month celebration. I'm your host, Smooth Operative. Thank you very much for joining us. This weekend, Frame Fatales is celebrating nearly three years of their Game of the Month program, and women from the community will showcase each game the FF server has learned since 2019. We are getting into quite possibly the most chat-anticipated game of the marathon, uh, <laughs> that being Luigi's Taco Stand, and I have with me Geneticist as well as Char Bunny. So, Geneticist, you want to start us off? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Geneticist. I'm a Super Mario 64 speedrunner, and I'm joined tonight by my wonderful commentator, Char Bunny. Char Bunny, would you like to say hi? Hello. I'm Char Bunny. I'm not a Nintendo 64 speedrunner, but I've played this game before at least once, so I'm ready to go. Well, then I think that makes uh, you qualified, so... That's all that matters. Uh, yeah, so tonight we're going to be taking you through Waluigi's Taco Sand, which is a modified version of Super Mario 64. This is a really quick run. It's only 10 or 11 minutes, so if you blink, you'll miss it. Uh, but I hope you get to see what a fun fever dream of a game this is. Uh, it's it's a wild ride. Definitely <laughs> like, Already, I want to draw your attention to the file names. These are the default <laughs> file names. We did not change these. <laughs> this is just uh, yes, we're That's good. We're going to be starting on a fresh file with Wa A. <laughs> <laughs> and the game is going to start. Uh, after I reset the console, a Camelot screen will appear, and that's when we go. So I'll count us down on go. Three, two, one, go. Good, Good luck. Go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we got there. <laughs> we got there. Fan game things. <laughs> so the game starts off with Waluigi on the brink of financial ruin. He has lost all of his money and also all of Wario's money at the slots. Dang. And, <laughs> and now it's time to pay his yeah, they're roommates. And now it's time to pay his rent. This is his landlord, Mr. Rent. Uh, he cannot pay his rent, but his landlord has come up with a unique solution. So in order to pay off this combined rent slash gambling debt that we've accrued between ourselves and Wario, we're going to be making tacos. Obviously that's everyone's first idea on how to solve a crisis like this. The way this game works is there's going to be four different worlds, 50 different tacos we're going to need to make. We're using just very standard Super Mario 64 movement to get through them. I'll be honest, that's not the coolest part of this game. The coolest part of this game is literally everything else. But Jen is also going to do a fantastic job on the movement. So we already got our first taco, which was cheese and beef. Our next taco is going to be lettuce and beef. The way this game works is there's different taco ingredients sprinkled throughout different spots in the world where they spawn is pretty set. And what we need to do is get the correct taco ingredients for each taco and then return back and serve the taco. So here we got lettuce just from a field. And beef is found inside Goombas, just as like everyone would have obviously guessed. The bacon-like thing that was on your screen, that's beef. Absolutely makes sense. No questions needed. No, it just, you, you can just go with it. Mm, Goomba beef. <laughs> right, and the thing is that Goomba's asking for that taco too, so this means that Goombas are actually cannibals if you didn't know that. Fun Mario facts. Oh no. <laughs> uh, and also, we, <laughs> we don't understand why the Goombas are bacon either, because aren't Goombas mushroom-based life? Like, they're not mammals. Right, and just to confuse everything, we actually do get mushrooms. There, there's the mushrooms. <laughs> so... Thanks, game. Already making a ton of sense. Um, and with that, if you were looking at the bottom of the screen, you may notice our rank has actually changed. We have different ranks as we progress through this game. We started as a taco amateur. We are now a taco enthusiast, and that unlocks Taco Island, which is our next location. The first taco here is just a fish, so we got the fish. You may have noticed that Jen waited a bit in the water. That's because the option to serve the taco will not show up on that pause menu until Waluigi stops moving. This may just be a holdover from when you could save and quit out of levels in 64. You have to just be stopped on the ground, all those sorts of standard things. Our next taco here is going to be coconut and beef. So each of the different worlds has some ingredients that may be the same and some ingredients that may differ. I think beef is the only ingredient that's in all four worlds in this game. Our next one is just garlic, I think. Jen, would you like yeah, to this comment is, on this taco? Oh. I would. This is my favorite, favorite taco in the entire game. Uh, it's a yukiki that says, please don't judge me, but I just want a taco full of garlic. And this was the game of the month back at the end of 2021. So for the entire time that I've been learning this run and doing this game, uh, I've been pregnant. So I really uh, feel with the Yukiki because a garlic taco sounds pretty good to me sometimes. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 
this level is a little bit of RNG actually. By the way, like the Goomba positions on top of that sand hill are a bit random and when the mouse comes out of that mouse hole is also a little bit random, but yeah, there's, there's tech in this game, I promise. Our final taco of world two is gonna be getting every single ingredient in this level. So there's up to five ingredients per level. This will be coconut, fish, beef, cheese, and garlic. First one we get is cheese because otherwise it's just obnoxious to deal with it. We just kind of hug that mound of sand until a mouse runs into us and that's great. Uh, here, the game definitely wants us to go around the tower and climb up using its like built-in steps, but you know, Jen's fast, you don't have to do that. And one of the things that's important to call out is we only ever need to get one of each ingredient. Even if the character ordering the taco is like, I want all of the chicken, I want all of the garlic, we only give them one and that's fast and they're fine with it. <laughs> With that, we are now a taco connoisseur, by the way. So that means we get to go to a new world. We get to go to Taco Canyon now. Uh, taco Canyon does have one thing that we're hoping doesn't happen, and that's there's a seam next to one of the plant fields where Waluigi can just sort of fall through the ground, and then we have to do some fun navigation to try to get out of it while half the world isn't there. So <laughs> we're just gonna hope for some good luck on that one. Our first one is gonna be lettuce, tomato, and uh, or sorry, lettuce, cheese, and beef. I can totally keep the track of that. We also just went through a fence, by the way, because if you go fast enough, the fence doesn't exist. Great, great game. Very, very classic. <laughs> Our next tacos. Sorry, it's. There is actually a lot to talk about in this game, but every time I say a sentence, I just feel ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> this game really makes you just say sentences you never thought you would have to say before. Right? Like, this wasn't on anyone's bingo board for today, but here you go. Uh, the difference with this next taco is we're going to get lettuce, tomato, and cactus. So we'll get some tomato here while we're waiting for the lettuce to spawn in. It does take a minute for this enemy to disappear. And the cactus is going to be in these pokies up at the top. Um, pokies are the enemies that look like they're a bunch of fuzzballs stacked on top of each other. And by ground pounding, sort of in the middle of them. We just take out all of the, the fuzz balls at once and we get our cactus right away. Our next taco, cactus, tomato, cheese, pretty straightforward at this point. So this is where I'd like to dive into a lore theory that I have about the game, because obviously this game has oh, a ton of lore. <laughs> just clearly. And this is where I'd like to posit a question that came to me at about 9 p.m. last night as I was thinking about this game before going to bed, as you do. And that is, if Mr. Red owns the taco stand, why is it called Waluigi's Taco Stand? Oh my god, I'm so glad you asked that. I don't know, but this question has plagued me for months, and I have no answer. So, I I might have an answer, but I'm gonna explain how chicken works first, and then we'll get into my, my okay, uh, sounds little good. conspiracy theory about this one. So chicken is gonna be the only ingredient in our next taco. Uh, the Goomba hates it, chicken, and that's why he wants it. It's very confusing. This means we do get to get the wing cap. Notice that we get the little wings on the sombrero, which is fantastic. And our chicken in this game comes from Klepto, who's the vulture who likes to steal Mario's hat. Note that he never tries to steal Waluigi's hat, despite the sombrero being an item he would steal in Mario Odyssey. So this clearly shows some favoritism on the board. All we need to do is knock into him in midair, and then he'll drop the chicken, but we need to pick the chicken up off the ground. Uh, and the hitboxes for this can be a bit interesting. <laughs> Fortunately, he fell into the water, so we're gonna have to go chase it, but generally we're gonna try to fall right down next to the chicken so we can grab it as quickly as possible. Back to my theory on how the taco stand is named, though. So, <laughs> clearly important. There's two things I can think of. One is that this is not the first time that Waluigi has worked at this taco stand. There's a, a sad theory, like a tragic theory, that this is just a cyclical thing, and every single month, Waluigi continuously gambles away his rent payment, and this is just how things work. Like, at this point, just every month, this taco stand exists. That kind of works okay. with the whole speed run, because we do the, the run over and over, but I think the real theory here, and I'm, I'm pretty proud of this, is that Waluigi is actually a Bowser Kingdom influencer. See, another, oh my god! <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I've got some more supporting evidence. So the first thought here is like that would be a reason that Mr. Red would put actual time and effort into updating the name of his taco stand. Is if Waluigi's name somehow is more likely to attract customers, so influencer lines up there. Another thing we've been debating in the community for a little bit is how is this the case that only 15 tacos pays off an entire month's rent and gambling debt? And some of the thoughts. This is a great question. Right. So we've thought about the fact that maybe, um, maybe this is something where these are incredibly exotic taco ingredients. Maybe there's a huge shortage of food in the Bowser Kingdom. We assume we're in Bowser Kingdom, by the way. The game does not specify the location. Uh, and so those could be reasons. But my new theory here is that because Waluigi is one of Mushroom Kingdom's top influencers, there's a huge markup on these tacos just for the Waluigi name brand on these. 
And my final piece of evidence, I got one more thing to support this theory, <laughs> is if you look across the franchise, such entries as Mario Tennis Aces, Waluigi knows his angles for the camera. He absolutely knows how to pose. <laughs> so, oh, he totally does. Right? So I think that fully explains all of the, the things that I wasn't sure about in this game. If I just go with, wait, Waluigi's an influencer. Terrible at managing money, but great at uh, taking pictures. You know what? He, he <laughs> really knows how to... He has swag, for sure. If he Mario really can be a cosplayer, Waluigi can be an influencer. I, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, I'll, I'll stop my conspiracy, conspiracy theories because I've been rambling for a bit. We'll go back to the game. So we just finished our second chicken taco. A little bit of trouble with the chicken. Part of the problem with the chicken is Klepto can just sort of be places, and the game won't actually show you where he is until you get close, so it's actually hard to find him sometimes if you're off-cycle. Thankfully, yeah. we're done with Klepto Tacos. Those are, those are just over. Yeah, the draw distance can be, uh, I don't know if it's inconsistent or what, but uh, the although Klepto is on a cycle, uh, knowing where he's going to be when you are trying to interact with him is not yeah. always the most consistent. <laughs> It's a whole thing. Uh, by the way, we're a taco professor now, so congratulations yes, to us. thank we, you. We now get to go to Taco Volcano. There's Dory, hi Dory, bye Dory. You can ride on Dory in order to get to all the different areas in this level, but it's slower than just like throwing Waluigi <laughs> at the lava <laughs> and doing this. Yeah, yeah this establishes uh, something very important if it hasn't been clear throughout the course of the run thus far. Waluigi is apparently immortal. <laughs> we literally uh, he hasn't taken die. any damage from falling. He takes no damage from lava. He cannot die. At all. And Do with that knowledge what you will. It's like horrifying in terms of its implications. But what this actually does mean in terms of the speedrun is this is a great beginner speedrun. This was actually my first Mario 64 speedrun. Um, and it's a nice short one where you can learn some of the basics of Mario 64 movement. It's only about, you know, 10, 15 minutes long, depending on how you are when you're getting started. And you don't have to do any of the really tricky tricks that you would get in some of the shorter categories for a Mario 64 speedrun. So Waluigi speedrunning definitely, definitely got a ways to go. <laughs> Looking like a good option. <laughs> yeah, I have speedrun Super Mario 64 for a while and did not know about this fan game version uh, until it was introduced as Game of the Month for Frame Fatales, and it has just been a delight to learn. And I, I really recommend it to anyone who already is familiar with Super Mario 64 and wants a new challenge or uh, someone who's looking for a gentle way into the game. And here we are, we're at Taco King. By the way, the last level had a spider legs, beef, spicy sauce, eyeballs, and bully horns as our taco ingredients, making it by far the most exotic taco, but we are Taco King, we did it. Ready? And that's time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Rand paid. <laughs> Rand paid. <laughs> GG. Okay. My favorite thing about this screen, though, is that it's a soft lock. You cannot do anything once you get to this screen. That's it. The oh game is God. done. Yep, we are just here uh, left to consider Waluigi and his rent. Well, and I'm sure everyone watching will have a lot to think about in terms of all the lore that you dropped on us. Um, but thank you so much, Geneticist, for, for running this amazing uh, game for us. Uh, do either of you have any shout-outs or anything you'd like to give? Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank the GDQ Hotfix and Frame Fatales for organizing this event um, and including me to show off this amazing game. <laughs> um, and just the Frame Fatales server in general. Um, the Game of the Month program is just a really great way to start learning new speed games in a really friendly and safe environment. And uh, that's been really uh, a fun thing to be involved with. So I'd like to thank them. And I'd like to thank Char Bunny for joining me tonight. Um, it has been absolutely delightful. Well, thank you so much for having me. I was really excited when you reached out and asked if I'd commentate this because the answer was yes. <laughs> I could yes. not think of a better way to spend my time. So thank you so much. <laughs> Well, yeah, thanks everyone. Well, thanks very much for being here to show off uh, the speedrun. Gosh, you know, I laughed, I cried, I might need a taco later. I don't know, but <laughs> it was a good time. So thank you so much. Uh, coming up, we have Verdant Wind, uh, Golden Deer. So we'll be back in just a moment for that. And uh, don't go away because it's the final run of the evening. <laughs> 